Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Give me Deuteronomy chapter 6 verse 4. Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy your enemies. <laughs> Back in the days. Deuteronomy your enemies. Hear O Israel. The Lord our God is one Lord. Dr. Damina, how many God do we have? One. <laughs> what about Trinity? One. <laughs> Here, O oh Israel, the Lord our God is how many? One. But what about Father, Son, Holy Ghost? One. He's the double-breasted God. He's the all-sufficient one. And if he's almighty, he can be anything he wants to be. So when he becomes son, he is still the father. When he becomes Holy Ghost, he's still the person. It's just that in his sufficiency, he can be whatever he wants to be for whatever purpose and for how long he desires to be it. Did he collect from you? He didn't collect anything from you. It is out of him that the father came. It is out of him that the son came. It is out of him that the Holy Ghost came. And all of them are still part of him. And he can decide to make them non-exist and be alone like that. He's all sufficient one. He's all sufficient one. He became all of that for the purpose of redemption. For the purpose of redemption. If there was no fall of man, there would be no Father, Son, Holy Ghost. Father, Son, Holy Ghost was to save man. That's a demonstration of God's love. He became Son because only Son can die. He became Holy Ghost because Holy Spirit can live in man. If I'm teaching, shout I hear you. The Lord your God, Moses already told them it's one God. So in Genesis 1 26 when he says, let us make man. Somebody said, but God said, let us. He was talking to other people. Uh -uh. In ancient or in an ancient Near Eastern language, when you say let us, it is used for a council of gods. A council of gods. When they talk differently in one. So again, God uses human language. Let us. When they talk differently in one. Okay, differently in one. So God is using human language to talk about his work in redemption. Let us make man. It is still God talking to himself. Genesis 1.26. That is God's redemptive project. Let us make man in our image. That is God's redemptive project. God wants to make a man that has his image. Teaching good this morning. Which means it's going to be father through son and by his spirit. Father through son and by his spirit. So God's promise is to be a father. God has always been a father. He is a father in the promise. He gave and in the covenant he made to Abraham. Look at Isaiah 63 verse 16. Mm -mm, pay attention. Isaiah 63, 16. Doubtless thou art our father, though Abraham be ignorant of us, and Israel acknowledge us not. Thou, O Lord, art our father, our redeemer. Thy name is from everlasting. You are our father. Even though Israel and Moses don't know us, you are our father. This goes beyond Israel and the fatherhood of Abraham over them. This is talking about the father of nations. I'm teaching here. Hosea 11 verse 1. Hosea chapter 11 verse 1. Hosea. When Israel was a child. Then I loved him. And called my son out of Egypt. I called my son out of Egypt. All those phrases shows you that that is God's promise. That is God's will. He wanted to be a father to Israel. Deuteronomy 131. Deuteronomy chapter 1 verse 31. God therefore in his humanity is called son. God in his humanity 
is called son. And then in the resurrection, he walks by his spirit. In humanity, he's called son. In his resurrection, he walks by his spirit. Three personalities, one single person. And we see that walk throughout the scriptures. Three of them, yet one. One walking in three, making sure that man gets help. <laughs> one walking in three, making sure that man gets help. You didn't hear that. I want to repeat it. One, walking in three, making sure that man gets help. He calls himself the Ezar, help meets. Ezar the God, one who rescues us from trouble. So Jesus said, be like that your father, one who rescues us out of trouble, one who forgives, one who delivers from the wicked and the evil one. And when he's saying that, he's reading Genesis to them. Hallelujah. In the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus, he commences the new creation by his spirit. It means when he goes to the cross, God's son sacrificed for us in the culture of Abraham. It is God that takes the animal sacrifice. But now he becomes our sacrifice. He doesn't ask us to bring animal. He becomes our animal. He doesn't ask us to offer. He offers to us. He doesn't demand from us. He supplies us. He doesn't take from us. He gives to us. That's the father. Hallelujah. That's our father. He doesn't stop at him being a sacrifice. He says I will multiply this upon the face of the earth. How are you going to multiply something? How are you going to work with everybody? It will be by the spirit. Ruach in the Hebrew. Like a wind. A wind. That is what you have in all the earth. A wind of God. The breath. And it's in everyone that has risen from the death. He's in everyone. And those that are here to rise. He is hovering around them. He is hovering around them. And the moment they open up, he raises them from the dead. And as he raises them from the dead, he occupies them. He lives in them. He walks in them. He becomes their father. They become his sons and daughters. All over the world. All over the world. The spirit of God moving upon the face of the waters. And God said, light be, light was. Moving all over the world. Hey, glory to God. And that prophecy is being fulfilled today. All over the world. The spirit of God is moving. And the knowledge of the glory of the Lord is flooding the nations as the water covers the sea. And it's happening in our time. I say it's happening in our time. Somebody's not shouting hallelujah. Somebody's not shouting hallelujah. You may not see it. You may not see it. But it's happening all over the place. God will walk by his spirit and he's going to walk in us. So when he says your will be done on earth, he's talking about your spirit will begin to walk in us to fulfill his kingdom. So God's spirit is walking in us, through us, to establish the kingdom of God upon the face of the earth. Hallelujah. And he does it through believers. He does not, he does not, he does not hold back. He gives everything he has. That's why he's your father. He forgives. He reconciles. He restores. He loves. And that promise of God in Genesis chapter 1 verse 1, 2, and 3 is being fulfilled today. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was without form, void, darkness was upon the face of the deep. But the spirit of God moved upon the face of of the waters. Waters is human beings. And God said. And today by the move of the spirit. God is saying. Every time you go to evangelize. God is saying. Because the spirit is moving. And when you speak the word. The spirit convicts. A man is born again. He's raised to, to, to life. And the spirit of God fills him up. He too goes out. And he speaks the word. Because the spirit is moving. And men are brought back to life. 
And through that, God is multiplying his family all over the face of the earth. If somebody is understanding what I'm teaching this morning, shout a powerful amen. Get on your feet, shout glory. Glory.